Right up on out of here I feel like a disgrace I'm not really what I appear I go home to my girl And I make nice seem nice The fact is she don't know That I just put someone on I don't like being here I constantly live in fear Could be gone at any time When you live a life of crime You have to face the music I'm trapped again And fate is always hasn't arrived again I always get caught in my life of sin But I just keep on going back again You know I'm lost again When all I wanted was to find a friend Someone that I can always depend on to help me find my life again. You know I'm trapped again. Welcome, everyone, to Mayhem Tainment Live. I am your host, JD, alongside what can only be described as our senior Star Trek correspondent, Jaina Pride. <laughs> and hopefully, That's a lot maybe, of pressure. <laughs> well, hopefully, maybe she'll be a, uh, a host of her own series here shortly with Mayhem. We're still working out some logistics on that, so nothing official yet, but we're working on that. Uh, we are going to definitely talk all things Star Trek on this episode i want to give a shout out to joe monroe who's already watching we appreciate that very much and um joe monroe since you're the only one watching um do you prefer the star trek the original series or star trek the next generation um and or what's your favorite series i'd like to expand that a little bit more to what's your favorite series and we'll put that up again as soon as we get some more people tuning in Jana Pride, before we get into more visuals and more questions and some fan interaction, I'm going to answer a question for you that initially led to this episode. That's how we ended up here. You asked yes. me why Deanna Troy gets to wear different uniforms or why mm -hmm. she seems to be exempt because she has a lot of variations on stuff. Now, while that question is never directed directly answered, okay, it's never been directly addressed in the TV show. <clears throat> this is where I can give you information from. In the two-part episode, Chain of Command, there is uh, Captain Picard, Worf, and Dr. Crusher are reassigned off the Enterprise, and Captain Jellico takes over command of the Enterprise. And in their first conversation with each other, privately, um, she's trying to give him advice about the crew, and he proceeds to tell her that she needs to wear standard uniforms while she's on duty. Right. And... The, the, what I've gathered from that is that P Captain Picard is more lenient with his staff, or at least with Counselor Troy, on the uniforms that she's allowed to wear. Jell Captain Jellico apparently prefers people to wear more traditional and standard uniforms. Now, there is precedent for a captain getting to decide what uniforms their crew can and can't wear. There's some leniency there, and there is precedent. Um, and I would also, I would cite the, um, when they started changing the uniforms from next generation in DS9, mm -hmm. remember how they started to change the colors changed just a little bit. Um, yeah. but if you look when captain Picard ends up on one of the DS9 episodes, he is still wearing the old school uniform. So there is some leeway and some leniency with captains deciding what uniforms their crew can and can't wear. So that is my answer to your question. Why does Deanna Troy get to wear so many variations and seem so casual with her uniform? It's because Captain Picard is more lenient with uh, his crew and their uniforms. Absolutely. And and what you're talking about with, uh, with the different uniforms, like there's multiple times where we see that in Star Trek. Um, piece, uh, 
Peace and long life. Yes. (laughs) Brain fart all of a sudden. I had to switch tracks really quickly. But yeah, you're right. There's there's definitely multiple times where we've seen uh, different instances of uniforms happening in Starfleet at the same time. Another example is when uh, Captain (laughs) and the Enterprise was introduced in some of the new Trek stuff. And sorry, I know we're not necessarily going there today, but I'm going to keep referencing it because... Yeah, yeah. Um, but so when Captain Pike and the Enterprise was introduced in Star Trek Discovery, uh, they were wearing the uniforms much like I am right now, whereas the Discovery officers were wearing the blue uniforms. And that was because, you know, oh, we haven't gotten the new uniforms yet, or oh, we haven't switched, or yada yada. And as much as I appreciate the thought that you put into this answer, (laughs) Captain Picard was not the kind of guy who just like, oh, yeah, swear whatever you want. Uh, yeah, but with Counselor Troy, they had a different kind of relationship, though. They had, I mean, not that they had an I intimate met relationship. Her as a woman on that ship, and like all of a sudden, Picard's just like, Yes, Deanna, wear these flowy, sexy dresses and these tight fitting patent suits. I would be like, What is going on there? Is there like a Vince McMahon thing happening between these two? I mean, I get, I can understand that too, but no, I definitely don't think any of that ever happened. I just no, think that, no. Yeah, no, I just think that there was like a, you know, a, a. They had a different kind of relationship that I've seen other captains have with their with their ca- guidance counselors. I mean, even after Picard, um, I don't want to talk about too much of this right now because I'm going to be saying, <laughs> but when he gets after he gets uh, comes back from the Borg, um he kind of talks, he stays on the enterprise and use and uses counselor Troy as, as his counselor to come back from his incident with the Borg. I don't know many captains that would stay on the ship and talk about those kind of issues and problems with their own crew, even their own guidance counselor on their own ship. I imagine that's not something that normally would happen either. So I, I think that Picard and, and counselor Troy have a different kind of relationship, I think, than most captains and their counselors. So, hey, RH, shout out to our graphic, our graphic artist. Most of the, uh, he did design the logo, both uh, that you see in the corner and here on this t-shirt right here, which you can pick up from our storefront, bonfire.com slash store slash JDE designs. That's with a Z at the end of it and pick yourself up some apparel. Um, so, um, now let's go back to the questions that we answered, unless you, unless you had something else you wanted to. No, no. Like, all right. You need to keep me like on track here because yeah, I will okay. go to rabbit holes. <laughs> um, Joe Monroe likes Next Generation, and for some of the new people tuning in, we asked uh, the original series or Next Generation, and I wanted to expand on that. What is your favorite series? Um, and then let's also get some other ones here. Do you prefer the TV shows or the movies? Leave your comments about that. And then who introduced you to Star Trek? Any of those, please leave in the comments, and we're going to get to them in just a minute. Now, Jaina, for me, I'll I'll take Next Generation over Star Trek. That's that's where I'm at. No, I agree. Um, the original was was great. It was very of its time. Um, a lot of the key concepts carried over, but you didn't really have the the passion into the product that you did with Next Generation. And some of the stuff that was going to be going off of like the the reboot of Star Trek at that time, like it was a passion project as much as like, you know, Roddenberry had his thing and he was so passionate about it. But then you take an entire production staff who has that same passion about it. It's going to be a better product. And then we saw that throughout the TNG era. Yeah. Um, absolutely. I am definitely a TNG uh, person all day. Uh, let's see if we get any comments quite yet. Um, oh, Robbie, uh, Robbie, you like Voyager. I, I, I'm a big fan of Voyager also. Um, if I had to choose my favorite series, I would still choose Next Generation. Um, but Voyager is a great one because of the story. I mean, a trip by itself, a ship, a trip, a ship tra- trapped by itself, 75 light years away. Yeah, that, that's 75,000 <laughs> light years away. That's, that's, a, it was a great story. Um, and Janeway is not, I'm sorry. And, I, Janeway, I'm not. Janeway would be my least favorite captain. Oh, she's so good. I no, I disagree. I disagree. I think she she holds a double standard too much. She she quotes the prime directive and then blatantly ignores it uh, whenever she decides to. I think that I have a problem with people who cite the regulations and then blatantly disregard them whenever they feel like. 
Oh, no, she's remarkably flawed. That's why I oh, love okay. her. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, good. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, I mean, she like, again, the story, and she does a great job with her crew. Like, I'm not faulting her as a captain, but she's definitely not my favorite. Yeah. As far as, like, story-wise, I think Janeway, I, I enjoy watching Janeway grow more as a character, uh, as somebody watching, you know, a, a TV show. Um, I do have to think, though, you know, agreeing, I think Picard is is probably uh, the best out of them, you know, yeah. even with the stuff like you were talking about when he was coming back from being assimilated by the Borg. He managed his command as best as he could, and like I was saying before, he kind of sticks right down that straight and narrow with Starfleet and deviates only when necessary. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's not the only reason that I like Picard. It was just one of the things that I that I didn't really care for in Janeway. Um, I mean, if you ask me about Picard, I think sometimes he's a little too rigid with the regulations. So we need to cross between Picard and Janeway somewhere in the middle there. <laughs> um, do you prefer the TV shows or the movies? Definitely the TV shows. The new TV shows. Okay. Okay. Oh, now for the, any of the TV shows. Oh, any of the TV yeah. shows. Okay. And Definitely for anybody watching, TV. we're gonna we're not gonna be covering too much of the newer TV no. shows on this episode. It was just too much to try and cram into this episode. We'll do another one where we talk more about the new episode or the new series. But um, yeah, I would also uh oh man, I, I love the series because of their longevity and the movies, you don't, know, you know, they're not as long and stuff, but I really am a fan of of the next generation movies. And I do enjoy going back and watching some of the original series movies as well. It's about, I can't really go back and watch the original series, the series itself. That's difficult for me to do, but I can put on any one of the, of the original series movies and watch through one of them. Yeah. And I think that goes back to, like I was saying, it was a product of its time, you know, that storytelling in the sixties, it was a much slower storytelling. Uh, and we kind of have uh, self-diagnosed ADD in society these days where we need faster things. So that's what makes, in my opinion, the the TOS era movies so much better than the, the series itself. Um, it's, it's a popcorn flick. Um, it's fast action. It's in and out. You get the story. You get the development. It's, it's great. Um, the new stuff, I think, the TNG era is the stuff where you really get that awesome long-form storytelling. Um, and then you get that ability to dig in more to those characters. So, like I was saying with Janeway, um, to actually see that development. You'd never see that if if it was a movie. No, and you're right. You do see a lot of growth with Janeway. With Picard, it's a, it is different because of the situation that they're in. Um, but Janeway does have a, a, a grow a lot in the epi in the series, especially especially towards the end. She really starts wanting to get the crew home you know, at all costs. And when then she, when she hears about the events that take you into the final episode, she just takes that chance, Borg or not Borg. And that was the other thing. Janeway was very formidable against the Borg. I will give her her dues. I mean, she was, she was formidable against the Borg. So she's a badass when she wants to be. <laughs> yeah, she can be. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she has a great, a great crew under her too. You know, the Maquis, you know, I, I liked, I liked the, um, the way that they had the, the trouble at the beginning. Um, and even through some of the middle of the series between the Maquis and the and the Star and the Voyager original crew. For sure. It was one of those wonderful, you know, that Star Trek is known for analogies to, you know, social social commentary. Yeah. Um, I'm going to address these comments here quick. Joe Monroe. Yeah, we're definitely not doing Star Wars tonight. And I don't know if you know about the rule, but you could create cause a riot if you start trying to talk Star Wars in front of Star Trek fans. I don't get the, 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 the issue between Star Wars and Star Trek fans. I'm a fan of both. They both offer different things. But, you know, I'm just saying. And, yeah, Friends of the Squared Circle knows. He made me a cool visual that had asking about what your least favorite character was. And it was um, Jar Jar Binks on it. And I'm like, dude, dude, were you trying to get me killed? I don't need death threats. <laughs> See, look, I, know, <laughs> See, I told him, I told, I, I told like, him what can happen. <laughs> I, I told him what can happen, okay? Uh, all right, so let's get some other questions going here. The original timeline or the expanded timeline? That's in, That includes the, uh, the uh, three movies. I don't know where the new series fall in that. I think they would also no. be part of the expanded timeline, right? Nope, they're part of the original timeline. So the, Ooh, the okay, newest movies or the Kelvin timeline is all its own thing. 
Okay, is all its own thing. All right, excellent. Um, so do you prefer the original timeline or the expanded timeline? I I like the original timeline. About the only thing that I think that came out of the expanded timeline or whatever you want to call it was a Star Trek online game, which I'm a huge fan of. And anybody who likes MMORPGs, get on it immediately and then message the page and I will bring you into the fleet. Um, it is a so, fun game. A good uh, friend of mine in the wrestling biz uh, has gotten me into it a couple times. Yeah, it's a great game. If you ever pick it up again, let me know. I will bring you into our fleet, which I have had. I was a part of Open Beta, so I, you know, I got the I got the uh, founder title and everything to prove it. So, <laughs> Joe Monroe, you like the expanded timeline with the new movies? That's interesting. I'm not really. You know, I, I love the. I, I think all the people, all the actors that they got to play the old characters in the new in the new trilogy movies did amazing they were all great but i still i think the first movie was really good i am just not a fan of the other two movies that came after it. i think the first one was really good i think the other two was was poor lazy storytelling even con i didn't really i love the i like the original con movie more than i like the new one benedict cumberbatch cumberbatch did a great job as con but i think the movie itself was just not as good as the first con movie no, I mean, how are you going to compare to that if you've already seen it? I, I would be interested if you just put like somebody down that likes sci-fi and says, OK, watch this movie and give them the new one first. What their opinion would be of that movie if you then turned around and said, OK, now watch this one. Are we just kind of going on the nostalgia of the con? And they're never. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they tried to change it up a little bit with, you know, Kirk dying and Spock living, and I and I respect that little twist there at the end because it's a new timeline. But I, you know, it just it felt. I get you wanting to pay homage to Khan, so we can get past number two. But then number three was just really, really a poor storytelling, a really bad story. It, it was just not good at all. Um, I think Wrath of Khan is a classic, Joe Monroe. I, I completely agree with that. <clears throat> yes, yes, hundred percent. I think it's one of those things where. The Calvin timeline is, it's its own thing. It, it is what it is. It was designed to sell movie tickets and push popcorn sales. And it did a wonderful job. Yeah. It's, to me, it's very much like uh, like in comic books back when they had like the Marvel Universe and the Ultimate Universe. You can like both. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shout out to Taco. Thank you for tuning in, Taco. Uh, let's get some more questions in here. Uh, do you have a favorite piece of tech? Goodness. Jana, do you have a favorite piece of tech? I can go first on this one if you'd like. Yeah, to go, go first because uh, yeah, I, 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 for me, it's, it's, it's got to be the transporters. As scary as it is, mm -hmm. I would love to be able to transport to various places here on the planet Earth without actually having to travel there. Travel, I don't like travel. That's not my that's not my favorite thing to do. When I was driving, when I had my own van, I was I, I like to drive, but I'm not really a passenger. So if I could just teleport or transport, that would be that would be better. That is a really solid idea. It's hard to argue with that. Like I was originally thinking like, okay, I really like tricorders. I like being able to look into everything and learn stuff about it. Okay. Now which era of tricorder, but, but no, you're, you're right. Transporters hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely, that's definitely where I'm at. Transporter. You have any idea how much money I would save as a professional wrestling referee, if I could just, you know, transport to the next city. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You just traveled a lot of miles recently. So yeah. Um, do we want to yeah, wax philosophical about what happens to you when you get transported? <laughs> yeah, I think Friends of the Squared Circle is uh, Craner Q agrees with us there on the transporting. So remember yeah. all these visuals, everybody who's watching, leave a comment. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll bring it up on the screen and talk about it. So let's start with, um, well, let's do this one favorite female character. Is it, do you have a favorite female character? Janeway. Janeway. Uh, Joe Monroe. Janeway. Joe Monroe also agrees, transporter. Um, all right, Janeway. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of Janeway and, but I'm going to have to pick, I'm going to have to pick seven of nine. Um, I like, I like her character growth. Like you were talking about with Janeway. That's the other thing that they had was seven. Once they got her and I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of Cass dropping her from the show and picking up Jerry Ryan as seven of nine was the best thing that Voyager ever did. It so, was such a creepy relationship that her and Neil had. Yes. And then her and Tom and then her and the, yeah, no, it was, and she's a child and no, exactly. that was, it was, 
that was so weird. I didn't like any part of it. And also, I didn't really care for her character. And nothing against, um, I'm having trouble remembering the actress's name that played her. But she it's not that she did a bad job. I think that she got saddled with a really, really crappy character. She had so, a pretty hard downward spiral after that, too, from what I recall. Yeah, and yeah, she had a really bad character. So I don't blame her. It's not her fault. Uh, but Seven of Nine was huge. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of um her coming back to humanity and Janeway helping her with humanity. And that was one of my the things that I think kept me as a Janeway, a little bit of a Janeway fan. Because I don't hate Janeway, she's just not my favorite captain. Um, but that was one of the things her helping Seven of Nine was really cool, I think, and really intrigued me. That's what really hooked me. Um, in that, in the latter part of the series there. So I'm going to have to choose seven of nine would be my favorite female character. Uh, 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 does it, uh, any, what? No, I was just. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, if anybody else wants to comment on their favorite character, go ahead and do that. Or favorite female character. Sorry. Um, favorite doctor. Do you have a favorite doctor? Yes. The doctor. From Voyager. Uh, the Doctor from Star Trek Voyager. The Doctor. Yeah. Bashir is a very close second, though. Bashir is is cool. Um, I kind of like um I'm totally drawing a blank on his name. I know his name, but um the guy who played the new cap uh new Dr. McCoy. Carl Urban was fantastic. Yeah, Carl well. Urban, thank you. Carl Carl Urban, yes. He I really liked his portrayal of uh, he did such a good job. He's the closest one, I think, to the original, to the original. Yeah, hundred percent was him. So Carl Urban did amazing. So, but I would have to go with Doctor Crusher. I think Doctor Crusher's. Although the, I mean, God, maybe a toss up between Doctor Crusher and the Doctor. Mm -hmm. The Doctor's just so good for comedic relief when you need him to be. Exactly. <laughs> he's he's so cool, and and he's another one where watching his journey into like kind of self awareness um, was so cool. It was. It was kind of like what they were trying to do with What's Her Goober, uh, like, oh, this child discovering how the universe works, but in a way that wasn't creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Friends of Scrooge, I don't know who Guy from the new one is. I don't know who you're referencing on that one. So I, I think, think he means Carl mean, Urban. I think he means Carl Urban also. Joe Monroe, Carl Urban, exactly. And yes, you did spell it right, uh, Joe Monroe. Carl Urban is definitely the right guy. Uh, Everything Carl Urban touches is gold. Like I he have been so good. I, I didn't know. I didn't get to see uh, him in the new Judge Dread. Because oh, that I was really I was like, oh, I don't I wasn't really, you know, the first one I'm not is kind of, I'm kind of iffy on anyway. Watch so, it. But I, I loved him in every in every everything else. He is so he is so good. Yeah, definitely watch it. Uh Crander Q doesn't do names. Well, hey, that's all right, man. We'll we'll help you out. That's what Joe Monroe and I and Jana are here for. But how do you name all your friends? Yeah. Anyway, he he uses the he uses the the lookup thing. He doesn't. It's all automated. He hits at and then scrolls through the names <laughs> until he finds who he's looking for. <laughs> um, favorite engineer. I'm gonna have to go with Lieutenant Commander Jordy LaForge of the USS Enterprise. Do you have a favorite engineer? Viewers, leave a comment. Do you have a favorite engineer? I'll put them up again here quick for yeah, you. Yeah, I definitely got to say Jordy also. Yeah. Alana was cool, and, you know, she's a, she's a good character. Um, the Klingons always make for really interesting characters, but I'm sorry. Jordy LaForge, LeVar Burton, is just – was awesome, and you just can't get past that. Yeah, when you're looking at, like, overall engineers, Scotty, Scotty's a fun character. Um, but, again, talking about the engineer and, and, and the growth, Jordy. Oh, my gosh, Jordy. Yeah. And LeVar Burton's another one of those people that, yes, more LeVar Burton in everything, please. Yes. Oh, please. Yes. Give me reading. Bring back a Reading Rainbow reboot. I will watch it right now today. He's been doing stuff like podcast and YouTube stuff, I think. Can't yeah. remember. Um, Scotty and the new ones. Uh, yeah, the new Scotty was really good. He did a really good job, too. He's probably second right behind Carl Urban for for authenticity and, and bringing the uh, what the original character, I mean, is close. I, that's what I think. Well, and Simon oh, yeah. Pegg was a writer on the new ones, too. Yeah. Oh, was he? Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, well, there you I go. I double check that, but I'm 99% sure. Well, no offense, uh, new Scotty, but I did not like the second and third ones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you uh, wrote Star Trek Beyond. Joe, yeah, Joe Monroe, uh, you are exactly 
we're, we're all in agreement then. LeVar Burton, Lieutenant Commander Jordy LaForge, um, and the new Scotty are the, the front runners for the engineer. Good. No, uh, no more debate on that one. So security officer, who's got a favorite security officer? I'm going to say, I, I really, I mean, Worf, who, you know, there's, there's not a better one than Worf. I'm sorry. No, there really isn't. Like if, if you, if, you, if I was, oh no, you're right. There's nothing. I was going to try and play devil's advocate and make a case for Major Kira. Yeah, she, I can't. <laughs> she's good. Yeah, she's good, but yeah. She's she's not as she's not warp. I'd also like to give a shout out to I can't remember his name, the guy who played in the uh, in the Enterprise in the original in, in the Enterprise uh, series. Um, it was really cool to watch him uh, come up with the red alert and some of the things in that series, you know, that yeah. we see in the later series. So that was pretty cool, and he did a good job. I like that actor too. I can't remember his name right now. I'm sorry, but uh, he did a good job in that too, and I really liked him. So I'll give him a shout out as well. But yeah, Worf all day, hundred percent. Uh, Michael Dorn, the way that he portrayed Worf was at times so stoic and serious. And then other times you were able to see that, oh, this character who is trying to uphold all of these values and bring honor to his Klingon house, he was actually raised by humans. And you get to see some of that personality come through at times. You know, and the, the thing that the, as a meme almost at this point, that I'm not a merry man. The fact that he's even doing that, like uh, a quote unquote regular going on, probably wouldn't have even done that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. His his whole battle and him being exiled and stuff and him earning his honor back was was really good. And I have to say that once they once I mean, the Federation, and the Klingons are at peace when that series starts. Their tensions are high, but. It's not like, you know, they're they're an all-out war or anything like that. So I, I think in the later seasons when they start banning with the Klingons against the Borg, against the Romulans, and they kind of become an ally, um, and even Picard gets involved with the selecting of a new, um, I can't remember what it's called, the new, um, the leader of the Klingon High Council. Mm -hmm. When, um, I just had the name of the Klingon too, and now I can't draw that either. Every time, every name I come up with, I have it there, and then as soon as I'm about to say it, it goes away. But names he, are my least really strong area in the world. Yeah. So he, but it, I think um, I really like the Klingons and and Warp's whole evolution in that as well. Um, let's. Where are we at here? Favorite first officer. Where am I looking? There we go. Favorite first officer. Does anybody have a favorite first officer? Yes, but she's not in scope for our conversation. So I will say Will Riker. Will Riker. And Friends of the Squared Circle, that is an interesting thing that you just said. That right is there. amazing. Um, uh, yeah, Commander <laughs> Riker. I have to go with Commander Riker also. there's That's just the way it is. I don't think anybody could choose a better first officer. I mean, Spock was a great first officer, but did, did, the, did the first officer really... The, uh, in the new series, the first officer plays more of a role. But in the original yeah. series, did the first officer role that Spock had ever really play a role? He was always just a chief science officer. The first officer thing never really played a big role in that. No, not at all. Uh, which is funny considering, like, when you look at some of the other areas, there were definitely first officers around. Like, in, in the original pilot, you know, Pike had his number one. Uh yeah, she, it was there. It was a role on the ship. And then they're just like, oh, no, Spock's going to be a science officer. And both we just got uh, while both of us choose Riker and agree that Spock didn't really exist as a first officer because there wasn't really a first officer role that he fulfilled in that. Both friends of Crander Q, friends of the Squared Circle and Joe Monroe are going to say Spock. So thank you for disagreeing with us very much. I think we also need to give a shout out to Chakotay. Chakotay is a, is is a really good first officer. He is he is good, but I don't think he was given a chance to really shine the way Riker was. I think is no. why is why we chose him over, or at least why I did. Why I would choose him uh, Riker over Chakotay is because Chakotay never really got a chance to to take command of the ship. Even the few times he was in command, it was always to usually get the captain back. Right. It like we were talking about with the crew and the Maquis, it's it's one of those things where it's it's cool thinking about though, like how would Chicote or how would that have been if Chicote hadn't handled some of the things the way that he did? 
Um, but yeah, you're right. Like Riker, and that's why I chose him also. It's just a more fun character, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Okay, now where's my here we go. Let's start. Let's start stir up some controversy here. We got some viewers. <laughs> let's stir up some controversy here. Who is your favorite captain? Leave a leave us a comment on who your favorite captain is. I am gonna go first because I already have my answer. Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise, of the Enterprise D and the Enterprise E. And that's my answer. He's such a good captain. Why does he keep blowing up his ships? He only blows up one. And then <laughs> he, and then after and then you know, after um Nemesis, you know, the E only needs it needs a facelift, but it's still intact. So, you know, and D, hey, did you 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 know what happened in the in 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 generations? I mean, them them kidnapping Jordy and getting the shield codes and having the saucer section crash on the planet. The Enterprise D went out in a blaze of glory. This is true. Wasn't Troy technically in command when the saucer section went down too? <laughs> no, she was commanding the helm. Yeah. Oh, that's she right. Was Riker, was, Riker yeah. had yeah. still had the bridge, but you hear, yeah, because there's an explosion and she's like, and he's like, Deanna, take the helm. And I mean, listen, yep. you're in dire straits when you're calling for Deanna to take the helm, that you're in real trouble. Hey, not she's a she's not a good, She not holds not right. a good pilot, just that if you're calling for your ship's counselor to operate the helm, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. She should not be the first choice. Yeah, no, no. You should be having someone else there. Um, Picard <laughs> and Joe Schaefer, thank you for uh, commenting, Joe. Uh, Picard over Kirk. Yep. Uh, Picard. Picard. Jane, you're know, taking shots. I don't know how to answer it. Joe Monroe, I will talk about Nemesis all day, and we're going to talk about <laughs> Nemesis in just a few minutes in the next visual. Okay, let's not let's not mess around here. We'll go. We'll we'll talk about it. Trust me. And Janeway is your second. All right. Yeah, Janeway. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Janeway. I'm just not the biggest fan of her. Although I, I like do I'm like her over um, a commander and then captain of DS9, who um, again I'm totally drawing a blank on. Cisco. Mm -hmm. Cisco. I'm, I'm not really a big fan of Cisco. Riker would outrage her. was too emotional. Yeah. Like he, Very emotional. And, and I mean, definitely when you look at his arc, and like kind of where he ended up was weird. Listen, you start out in episode one and you're telling the card that you hate him. You're not, I'm not your friend now. You just yeah. turned me off to you. Oh, look at us. We're on a space station and we hate Picard. We're different. Tune in on Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. A lot of things are happening in the comments. Picard all day. I agree, uh, Dana. Definitely. Definitely uh, Picard. I think we've all, we're all in agreement on that. <laughs> yeah. Riker would outriz Kirk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Riker would outriz Kirk. Um, you know, uh, I wouldn't mind seeing that War Games matchup. Let's just be honest. Wouldn't that be cool to just see like a crossover episode where you had like, you know, Kirk in his prime and Riker in his prime and like they just had to like go solve a crime together. And by being that crime it was like, who can like seduce this woman? That would be very, very funny. There, You know, I had a favorite episode or story arc visual. I don't know what happened to it. Oh, by the way, shout out Crander Q, Friends of the Squared Circle. He's making all the visuals of everything that we're putting up on screen. In fact, I had a surprise for him, but then I forgot about it. So I apologize, Crander Q. The next time you do some visuals for me, I got a surprise for you. But unfortunately, I forgot this time. Actually, I wonder if I can. Um, hold on one second. I'll check that out. Let's do um, – I wanted to do – I wanted to do that one. But since we don't have that one, let's do something else for a minute. Um, we're going to talk about that um, – oh, the favorite movie. Wait, where's my favorite movie? That's what I'm looking for. There it is. Favorite movie. I knew I had it. Favorite movie visual. And uh, we got some comments here, but let's do that. DS9 doesn't move. Yeah, you're right. DS9 doesn't move, Joe. Uh, it doesn't. And he he starts as a commander. Let's be, let's be, let's uh, point that out that uh, Cisco yeah. does start as commander and he's not promoted to captain until later. And technically he's not promoted until, if I'm not mistaken, and someone can correct me, but he's not promoted until captain until DS9 gets the Defiant. So technically, Correct. DS9 gets a ship. That's what makes him a captain. 
even though yeah. Worf, even though Worf is the commander of the Defiant more often than Cisco, if I'm not mistaken, but that is why. No, yeah, but again, Defiant Joe, the Defiant is a uh and yeah, it was after they wrapped up the Dominion storyline so that, you know, they basically said, okay, here's your ship. And he was able to go off and just be even more of a hothead. Yeah. Uh, you have a shout out there, Jano? What's up, Usual Pigeon? You're that a very is, unusual pigeon. That is a great name, Usual Pigeon. <laughs> oh, Joe wants to know about Riker with or without the beard. Um, oh, my God, with all day long. <sighs> In all fairness, I prefer a man with facial hair in general, though. So, <laughs> yeah, the right the beard makes him look a little more distinguished. I, I think I'd probably choose the beard too. Wrath of Khan for your favorite movie, Joe. Okay, Joe Monroe. By the way, we got two Joes commenting. Nemesis for Joe Schaefer. People don't like that. We're gonna, we're going to talk about that in just a second. Uh, Joe Schaefer about Nemesis because uh, Joe Monroe apparently doesn't like it. Uh, beards all day. Yes, of course. No one's saying first contact, and we're this close to first contact day. <laughs> well, yeah. Would you like to go first on your favorite movie? Oh, I was just looking at the chat. I, I mean, I like first contact. It's uh, it for me, it's probably generations just because of all of that nostalgia coming together. Um, like I said earlier, the movies are for when you want like a short, tight, popcorn fun in and out storyline and if you're willing to tug on my heartstrings of fandom while doing that i'm i'm there yeah um i'm not i did absolutely i don't care what anybody says i did not cry when the enterprise d crashed um yes i uh, generations is a really good movie um it's a it is a it is a really good movie it gives you that nostalgia i think as you said and brings a lot of stuff together we get a lot of uh uh, TV show stuff in uh, in that movie. Even though so, Shatner can't canonically erased his death. Uh, yeah, yeah. Stupid books. Don't let William Shatner write your books, Star Trek. Yeah. Um, now I'm gonna pick um, my favorite one. Yeah. Um, it is I, actually I was going to say First Contact would be my favorite. I think the movie with the Borg. I don't understand why they got rid of Whoopi Goldberg. I can't understand why they maybe weren't able to negotiate with her, but I don't understand why they didn't have her. I don't know how you have it. I think as she put it, uh, how do you have a Borg movie without without her? So I that's the only part about that. But we are going to talk about. I'm going to talk about Nemesis for a second, and the reason Nemesis is good. Okay, and it's because of for for many different reasons there's a couple reasons that it's good and the first is definitely because of tom hardy i'm a huge tom hardy fan i think he played an excellent young picard i don't remember much of nemesis if i'm being honest i i had no animosity towards it i was uh, i like it the nemesis I'll be honest, i don't sure. remember much about it i have it too <laughs> Nemesis Joe Schaefer. Nemesis is when Tom Hardy was in. He plays a young Picard um, who needs his blood in order. It's a Romulan ploy for them for him to replace Picard. And then the story is a little bit wishy-washy because there's a fallout and a change in the hierarchy and the Ravens, Ravens start offing people to take control. But <clears throat> the battle, it's the battle at the end. That's what makes Nemesis one of the top movies because ship to ship combat is something that we don't get a whole lot of in, even in the series, we only get it a little bit and there's nothing better. And I don't care whether it's sea or space, there's nothing better or more tactical than space combat. That's my opinion. I love space combat. I love the tactics that are involved. I love everything about it. So watching that whole battle, watching Picard go against his younger self in a Riemann battle in, in a ship that had outer and secondary shielding 36 disruptor bays and like 18 or something torpedo bays against the enterprise e which was small which was maybe more technically advanced and maybe had better shielding but was far tinier and had far less firepower than the enterprise d so it's that ship battle that's what that's why that movie is awesome that's what makes that movie good it's the final battle between the uh dreadnought and the enterprise e that's what makes awesome. I love it. Picard sitting in the ship, giving his giving his uh, crew orders. Uh, I don't even care. They didn't even need to go to the, the way the ships were moving. They could have kept it in just going back and forth between 
Tom Hardy giving commands to his crew and Captain Picard giving commands to his crew. That They didn't even need to show any of the space battle as far as I'm concerned. They could have just kept it there. So that's why Nemesis is good because we actually get a legitimate and real single ship against single ship and we get to see how space combat unfolds. That's why that movie is good. And I will never again question why you like Star Trek Online. <laughs> <laughs> if, yes, You're right, I don't. Space I hardly am ever amazing. in Star Trek Online. I'm hardly ever on the ground. Only when I'm doing the episodes and they make me go on the ground. I never <laughs> leave my ship. That's pretty rad. Um, yeah, and ship to ship combat. There's nothing better than that. Uh, where were we? Because I got so I got so amped up on that. I don't even know where we're at now. What did we just do? Favorite movie, right? Yeah. All right. We still have viewers, so that's good news. I didn't turn everybody off with that. Oh, best villain. Let's uh, let's do best villain. Leave a comment with your best villain now that my rant is over. Clearly, it's the Gorn. <laughs> oh, and Joe Monroe. I got Joe Monroe to concede that the battle was good. So thank you very much for that. Um, I'm sorry. You were saying what? The Gorn? I, I love that the Gorn is on here. Oh, yeah. That was... Um, that's Crander Q. Yeah. Oh, we're going to see if I can't do that. Uh, who's your, do you have a favorite villain? Can you go first while I try and see if I can uh, get Crander Yeah, Q for sure. Shout out here. So, I mean, there's, there's obviously a ton of villains. Like Khan is going to be amazing. You could take so many people from the Klingon Empire. The Gorn actually become formidable, but again, we're not here to talk about New Trek today. <laughs> yeah. But, it's hard and 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 I'm here's the problem is I'm I'm trying really hard to make a case for anything else because I'm sure you're gonna say the same. But how do you not say the Borg? <laughs> because they're they're like bed bugs. You can't get rid of them. Like all it takes is one little scrap of code and oh boom, there they are again, you know. Um and, Fact that they were all encompassing and able to impact multiple eras and all of this stuff. You, you they've conquered so many civilizations. Like they're the most evil evil people in the galaxy. Uh, yes, um, I am going to actually give a dual answer here. Um, and th if you didn't notice, our little. Uh, logo bug in the corner has changed we're giving crander q a shout out whether he wants one or not uh he did all the he did all the uh all the visuals um let's see joe q q i don't know that you really call him a villain oh. but all right okay all right and i'll and i'll give you that he he was he was he was a great picard nemesis but uh, so much a villain i'm not so sure i don't really see him as a villain to the star trek he's more of a an ally in his own way. And Khan, I can't argue, Khan's a great villain. Not going to deny that. But I am going to also choose the Borg. Um, because the first time you saw them in the first Next Generation episode, you were you didn't know what they were. And even at the, by the end of the episode, you still had no idea what they were. Um, and then when you see him again, they are kidnapping Picard and and taking him. They're, you know, it's... They've, they've always, ever since their, their arrival, they've always been a top villain because of their, they're so hard to adapt to and take out. So I definitely will choose the Borg. But I'm going to throw in a little Voyager shout out here, and I'm going to say Species 8472 Ooh. because they kicked the Borg's ass, and Janeway had to team up with the Borg uh, in order to, to take the to take the, on a Species 8472, also called the Undyne, in case anybody wants their actual name, their species name. Um, so that's what I would choose species 8472. And then they were going to invade, um, regular space. They're from fluidic space, but they had the uh, recreation of, um, Starfleet Academy. They had various captains and people in high ranking positions. They were going to infiltrate. So I'm going to definitely say species 8472, just as much as the board there. And like perfectly replicating Boothby and everything too. At Starfleet yeah. Academy. Like the personalities of these people that the officers knew they perfectly replicated. Yeah, I like how uh, Joe says, you know, anti-hero for Q. Somewhat, I I kind of think definitely. him and Picard are kind of frenemies. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But anti-hero is not bad. I I could I could see that. Border just too OP. Yeah, Joe, they are they are OP. 
with the Borg, uh, the reason I think it's so hard to argue with them for me is there's been no other villain in Star Trek that has elicited an actual fear response. Yeah. And I remember like watching some Borg things both a while ago and recently and being like, oh my God, like I'm I'm really uncomfortable watching this. Like it kind of is eliciting this little bit of fight or fright, flight in me, that, like a horror movie would. It's And that's why I, 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 I would agree with you. That's why I would I would definitely choose the Borg um just a little bit over species A472, because once we figure out how to kill them, they're really they're like, oh wait, we don't want to mess with you now. Um so they kind of back off pretty quick and the Q were just move forward, assimilate, move forward, assimilate. It doesn't matter. They're not going to stop. So that's what makes, I think, the Q so scary is that you Borg. know that unless you've got all of them, there's more Borg out there coming sometime, someday. Yeah. Like I said, bed bugs. <laughs> Plus seven of nine. Uh, I, seven of nine is who I chose is, is one of my, uh, is one of my uh, favorites there. Uh, my favorite female character is is who I chose Seven of Nine for, and she would be my probably my second or third overall character uh, behind Picard. And let's do that. Let's do our favorite characters. Overall favorite characters. What is your overall favorite character? Leave us a comment. Jana, do you have an overall favorite character? Q. Q. Yep. Oh, I didn't even think about choosing him. Yeah, Q is definitely good. I like Q very much. But I am going to I'm going to choose the man that's on the screen there, Data, Lieutenant Commander Data, second officer of the USS Enterprise D and E, and the Chief Operations Officer, and he is my favorite overall favorite character. Picard's my favorite captain and probably my second favorite character. Um, but I, I have to choose Data. I like I I, I like everything about Data. I I've, I like everything about Data, and my favorite. Um, one of my favorite episodes, actually, or story arcs. I was going to look for that. I thought I had that visual, but I don't have it. But one of my favorite episodes or story arcs is um, Gambit, the two-part Gambit series where um, Picard is missing and Riker's looking for him. And then Riker gets kidnapped, putting Data in charge. And we don't get to see Data in command very often. There's only a handful of times or so that we get to see Data in charge. And some of those times aren't even in command of, of the Enterprise, so the Gambit series, when he takes command and is and is in command long enough that he has to choose Worf as his first officer, that is my favorite story arc. Um, that would be just beat out when Picard gets assimilated by the by the Borg because I love Data in charge being in command. I would have watched it. They could have did a spin-off series and had him be the commander of his own ship, and I would have and I would have loved it. So it was Data, really cool how like he pulled Worf aside when Worf was like not really on board. He's like, "Oh, you're not really in yeah. charge." And would you have reacted that way if Captain Picard had given the same order? Yeah, yeah, and I love that. That's what I loved most. Of, I mean, that's one of the things. I think that's what hooked it for me because I love that he was in command and then Worf questions him right in front of everybody, but he doesn't just call him out in front of everybody. He says, "Hey, I'd like to, you know, can I speak to you for a moment?" And then calls him in, and then. Gives him a, a a pretty dressing down, yeah. Um, but like in a respectful way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yes, yes. He wasn't disrespectful to him, but he was just like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm the captain. You know, have you ever heard Riker, you know, be blatantly, you know, disobedient or disrespectful to Picard as you just were to me? Um, that's the funny thing. An android is capable of being respectful while still like putting somebody where they need to be. I and I half love the time people is in the real world as humans can't do that. I love when Brent. I love when when Brent Spiner gave Data some emotion. It only mm -hmm. happened a few times, and I always loved that he did it. And I like to think that he that it was him making the choice for Data to show these emotions because he's he's learned them from Picard from Riker. And he knows that when you're in command, sometimes you need to display that. So I love, I, that's why, but even when he takes over, um, when they're trying to uh, put a net around the Romulans, I think, or the Klingons, um, and he takes command of his own ship and then his first officers, you know, disrespecting him and everything. And he has to dress him down right in the middle of everything. Um, like I, I, I loved Data all the time. Everything he did, every episode that he's in, I, I'm a huge Data fan. And that's why I choose him as my favorite character so and uh, q is a great character too though i mean i love q true but now so, that you mention it data yeah. is yeah. fully functional <laughs> yeah and let's not forget that he got lucky with uh lieutenant tasha yar 
<clears throat> so um, Data or Riker? Yeah, D Riker's good too. Uh, he, I chose him as my favorite first officer, but he, he 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 doesn't probably make the top five for my favorite character. I got too many other favorite characters. The Doctor and the new ones. Oh, Carl Urban uh, or um, Bones. Uh, Joe Monroe says Scotty. Interesting choice, Scotty. I assume you're probably choosing from the new movies. Oh, and yeah, you're right. Nobody brought up lore and villains. I thought about Ooh. lore. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't even think about lore, but he's definitely a villain, and I oh, I like when he was in too. It was always great to see Brent Spiner play a character who doesn't show any emotion, and then a character who is so overly and oozing emotion all the time. It's just, it's like he was making up for all of his time as data. I feel like we don't need to talk about B4 though. About what? B4. B4. Uh, you know, um, if anybody wants to know, I actually have some history on B4 because they came up with a whole bunch of story when Star Trek Online came out. Uh, B4, uh, the data download eventually takes place. So B4 actually eventually becomes data or data, the next data, data 2.0, if you will. Um, and he actually takes command of the Enterprise E for a little bit. And then he's he's also commander of the Enterprise F for a little bit. There's actually a connection uh, in some new Trek stuff that we'll talk about someday. <laughs> yes. Okay, we will. I'm catching up on some of the new stuff. I'm making my way through um, Discovery right now. So we will definitely uh, talk about some of the new stuff then. Synths definitely play into the storyline in this final season of Discovery. More <laughs> okay, so Joe Shaver says that uh, Brent Spiner or Data was never more villainous than when he pulled that Wesley Crusher figure out of the unopened box in front of Sheldon. That is a Big Bang Theory reference. I've seen that episode. It's a good one. Uh, that's great. I love that you just brought that up. <laughs> Um, I, I had no idea what that was from. Yeah, that's from the Big Bang Theory. Uh, pretty good series, and yeah, it's 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 really good. Um, favorite alien race. Let's do that one. I think that might be my last actual visual, and then we can just talk about some other stuff here. Do you have a favorite alien? Do you have a favorite alien race? I want to say the Vulcans. Yeah, because I admire the stoic uh, stoicism that they exhibit um something about being so in control of your emotions like it's not that vulcans don't have emotions they're just so in control of their emotions yeah and when they lose their emotions or lose that ability it's quite extreme on the extreme yes. side or pon far when they experience pon far, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and experience you've gone far it's best that you stay away yeah i mean yeah that's when you when yeah that's no good when spock slaps on his axe body spray and goes to town uh yeah with a um um a holodeck character yeah wait who did you just say spock i i was just waxing hypotheticals i just could well i just said i just said something that tuvok did not spock so that's yeah. my apologies there for mixing them up um joe monroe says klingon uh, i think my problem with the klingons is that they're they they're so much about honor and yet on a ship any officer can challenge for a command of the ship at any time so i think that they talk about honor out of one side of their mouth and then talk about power out of the other side of their mouth so that's my only problem with the klingons and but I honestly, with my favorite alien race, I would also I might also choose the Vulcans because or the Romulans. I might choose the Romulans. I like that they're I just I like their superior than thou attitude <laughs> all the time, just all the time. Um, I would be really like, interested to see a a a. I don't think there's ever been a half Klingon, half Vulcan like actual character. Like I'm sure they exist out there. I'm sure there's some compatibility, uh, but but it would be interesting to see a Vulcan or a Klingon raised by the other culture, because with one of them being so intense, like you were saying, an honor driven and throwing emotion into everything, and, blah, blah, blah. and that's my Klingon, by the way. Uh, and then you have the Vulcans, like I said, that are just so rigid and in control, uh, similar to what we were talking about with Worf before. 
watching the dichotomy from the Klingon culture and the human culture. Let's let's ramp that up to 11 and see that dichotomy between Klingon culture and Vulcan culture. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, get to, well, we get that a little bit with Worf because he was raised by humans, but he's not a human. So, I mean, he kind of does have a little bit of a conflict, but the Klingon always wins out. We get to see it more with Balana because she kind of rejects her Klingon heritage from Voyager. Um, and I think that's an interesting how she kind of rejects her Klingon heritage until she and, until she experiences some things. So, yeah, I and I think uh, between the Vulcans and the Klingons, that would be something. That would be something to see. I don't even know. I don't even know how that would work. <laughs> like you just said, that would be so difficult. How do you how do you suppress that stuff? But with Klingons, that's where they get a lot of their, you know, even their even their um spiritual like um practices right. and stuff require passion and and anger or or whatever and that's that's and that's opposite to what Vulcan teaches. So yeah, that would be that would be one of the most interesting characters you could probably come up with. I think right there. As a uh, so I'm a Taoist, and as a Taoist, I'm constantly thinking about like what are these most extreme like dualities that we can compare against each other and weigh and see how they're connected. Yeah. So that's like the ultimate you know dichotomy between cultures that I could think of. Yeah. Um, and well, and I would also choose Romulans because one of my, I didn't mention him during the villains, but one of my like individual villain captains, um, both actually two of my favorite individual cap villain captains are Romulan actually, because I like Tom Hardy as the young Picard, as the Praetor Shimzon in Nemesis. And I also liked, um, I also liked, um, Nero, Captain Nero from the new, from the, uh, expanded universe, from the new series in the first, in the first movie. Also, yeah, I yeah. Also, I'm an Eric Bana fan. Uh, Worf and Spock get into a fight. Who wins? Well, that's easy, Joe Schaefer. Uh, I have just um, the um, the three words for you: Vulcan nerve pinch. That's why Spock beats Worf. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's all it takes. So yeah, I think Spock is going to be far more fluid in his motions, and it's going to be one of those things where he just like dodges, dodges. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then he's out. Oh, Warp's unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, friends, I'm going to agree with whatever you say that because I don't think Leroy from 13 Cards is tuned into this episode. So we can we can definitely just call him an alien and we can say he's our least favorite because he didn't tune in. So if you're watching this later, Leroy, leave a comment and you missed it. And that's why you're getting you're getting smack talked about you. Um, no, of course, we're just kidding. Uh, we're just kidding. Of course, we're not calling out anybody or doing any of that nonsense. But it's fun to kid with our friends. Uh, I have no more visuals. So is there anything else that you would like to talk about about Star Trek or talk about your favorite anything? I think we've covered a lot so, of it. So my my cat's sitting here looking at me uh, kind of side-eyed, and that might just be because she's a cat and kind of a jerk. Um, but I'm pretty sure she wants me to give some love to Spot, um, who was oh. forgotten about when we were talking about data before. Yes, uh, Spot, yes, uh, Data's cat Spot, and he does recover Spot at the end of um, Generations after the D, after the Enterprise D crashes um, when he's looking around, and he does find her. So it's, he's still, as far as I know, he has Spot for many years, and he's a good, he went back for her in a crash. So, mm -hmm. or him, is Spot a him or a her? I'm not sure of that answer. Him. It is a him? Pretty sure. Okay. So yes, uh, Data is a very good cat owner. And, and just shout out, he's also a very good father. Uh, remember he did, he was a father. He had a daughter for a, uh, a short amount of time. For roughly 42 minutes. What do you, what, what do you want to know, Crandor Q, about the colors with the uniforms? I think uh, you might have missed it earlier. We talked about how the captains kind of have a little bit, a little bit of leeway on what uniforms they, they have their, uh, their crew wear. And oh, if you're talking about the colors, um, it depends on what era you're talking about. In the original series era, it is yellow for command, um, red for engineering, and blue for science and medical. In the new series or next generation era, it is switched around. It is still blue for medical and science, but then it is yellow for operations and engineering and red for command and security. Yeah. That is what the different colors for, if that's what you were asking, is yes. The new yeah. era is red for command and security, blue for science and uh, science and medical, and yellow for engineering and operations. 
And all of the uniforms also have like their own indications of rank and whether it's stripes or, you know, the pips on the, the, the pips, pips on, on the, the neck. Yeah, yeah. The pips on the neck also signify, um, and they also have different admirals have different uniforms than, than this, than a captain or commanders or anybody on a ship. You'll also encounter, um, some space stations have different uniforms than, than some of the uniforms that you see on a ship. Can we take a second to appreciate the scant in TNG? <laughs> the what? The scant. It was the mini skirt uh, uniform with the short sleeves that like Troy was, we were first introduced to Troy in. Uh, in the very first episode. And there's, believe it or not, you can actually, there's, there's a man or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a man or two, yeah. that, men or two that would wear them too. And yes, I will, we, let's give them a shout out and let's all be grateful they got rid of them. <laughs> well, because in the 24th century, it's okay to not adhere to gender norms, so a man could wear a scant too. It has no. I have. It's not. That's not my argument. No, I know that's not what you're saying. Okay. I know that's not what you're saying at all. Okay. I mean, I may make that argument because I'm sorry, men do not look good in skirts. That's just. I'm sorry. That's just a fact of life. That's something we all have to grasp with. I don't care. That's just the way it is. <laughs> However, that's definitely not my argument with that. Um, I think the skirts were completely, completely the most ridiculous yes. thing to have on a starship or in any kind of thing like that. It would have been um, one thing if it was like my uniform from, from the Strange New Worlds, where it, it's essentially a long sleeve scant, but there's pants under it. And and in TNG, there it was just like bare legs. Like I have to think it was nothing but like their boots in a banana hammock below the belt. Yeah, no, that doesn't work for me. No. Um, that's why and I don't think that works in a situation like that. So, uh, now Joe Schaefer, you want to know, you think Kirk or Picard would do a better job in Voyager situation than Janeway did. I'd be surprised if Kirk made it 10 light years with the ship yeah. still intact. 100%. And I think Picard would have interpreted a lot of things differently given the prime directive. And I, th I think, I think the trip would have been completely different than Janeway's, but I do think Picard would have also gotten them home. I think he would have, but I, at the same time, I don't know that, you know, we were talking about how Janeway is an inconsistent captain. Um, some of those inconsistencies were to definitely the crew of Voyager's benefit though. Uh, so I, I wonder how, how much Picard would be willing to ignore the rules in order to, uh, to get them where they needed to be. Kind of like you were saying before, like a, a mix between commanders in certain situations. I feel like in this case, like Janeway is that medium between, you know, the, okay, we have to go A, B, C, D that Picard is and the agents of chaos that Kirk would be. Uh, yeah. And also, I'd, uh, Joe Schaefer, it would also depend, I mean, if the, are we talking about Picard or Kirk um, in their respected enterprise being lost in the Delta Quadrant or are they commanding the Voyager also? Because I think that would make it a difference also. Cause I think, I think, for, I think, I think Picard would do, would do a lot of things differently in Voyager than he would do with the enterprise D or E. Yeah. I think for sake of argument, you'd have to assume that they're all in, you know, helming Voyager. Sorry guys. I'm a couple comments behind. So Joe Monroe, I don't know what you're saying no to. Oh, we did the we did the favorite engineer earlier, and Jordy's definitely Scotty's a great engineer. I have to go with Jordy. But who's a better engineer? I would argue Scotty. Scotty, if, yeah. if we're talking just like capable engineers, I would one hundred percent say Scotty. And here's why: because how many times did Jordy require the help of Data and Wesley and and uh, Wedge? in order to solve the problems. Now the argument could be made, well, his enterprise was bigger and more complicated, so it required more than that. But at the same time, he should have been quicker on the uptake. And he had like the universe's smartest computer there with him working on it. Like why are you bringing in the kid who's solving crap? And Jordy, get your crap together. I, I love Jordy as character. I said he was my favorite engineer. Yeah. But from a skill standpoint, Scotty. You do, you do make a good argument. You do make a good argument. Joe Monroe. Yeah, they're having an argument in the conversation. They're not even listening to us. You guys go to your own page and have comment arguments. <laughs> I did not even watch a minute of WrestleMania. Neither. I didn't get a chance. I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch it, but I did not. Uh, I did not get a chance to watch it live or anything like that. I had too much other stuff going on. Oh, and we're going to change. I'm a friend to the squared circle. Crander Q. As you saw, I put you up in the corner. You're the bug in the corner. So, uh. And you don't have to worry about spoilers, dude. We're not, I'm not that interested in WrestleMania. I'm going to watch it, but I'm not like, oh, you ruined it. No, dude, um, you don't. 
Uh, like, dude, it's not, you're not going to ruin anything for me. I don't care. I'm going to watch it so I can watch it, but it's not like I've never been, we're not getting into wrestling, but I'm not a WWE fan. I like AEW. I was a WCW guy. I'm not a WWE fan. So you're not yeah. ruining, ruining one thing. Basically, but, and like you said, you know, now I'm going to talk about wrestling, but same, like I, we talked about it a little bit pre-show. Yeah. But I, I choose not to watch WWE, which is a hot take from somebody who's working the indies in the industry. Um, but I like I turned on WrestleMania last night thinking I'm going to watch some of this. And I got like two minutes in and I thought, no, no, I'm not going to watch this. to watch from last night. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, and Crandall Q friends of the squared circle. We had you up in the corner through the visuals and stuff. Crandall Q friends of the squared circle made all the visuals, but I am going to put my bug back in the corner now, but we thank you for all the visuals and everything you contributed to this episode and for everybody tuning in. <laughs> yeah, credit to, yeah see what you guys do no no again you're not ruining anything because i'm not that i'm not that big of a fan but anyway star trek um so um yeah we're gonna do we are gonna do an episode on the new some of the new series discovery and picard um is there another one i feel like there's uh another one. strange new worlds which ah, strange is... new worlds yes that's the one i'm missing oh no you're also missing lower decks i'm um, not i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna watch that I'm not gonna watch lower decks. Doing yourself a disservice, dude. I can't. No, no. The jokes. I can't. If I start seeing those jokes in lower decks, I will not be able to turn it off in my head when I start watching real Star Trek. And I, I'm I, not. Gonna, I know. I like that Star Trek can be serious and I can laugh. Those jokes are going to make me laugh at everything, even when it's serious, and that's not what I want from my Star Trek experience. Not no, true. exactly, Joe Monroe. It is funny. It is. It it's is a lot funny. To be funny. Lower Decks is funny. I know it's funny, but I can't watch it or I will ruin other Star Treks for myself. I, I didn't. <laughs> but maybe you have that capability. Maybe. I would also argue that Prodigy deserves a seat at the table talking about New Trek. I don't. I don't. What is that? Prodigy was a Nickelodeon cartoon that lasted one season and I believe is going to be brought up on Netflix, but it furthers the story of Janeway and Chakotay. Oh, I did not know. I did not know anything about that. Yeah. Admiral Janeway shows up in it, and uh, uh, Kate Mulgrew also plays like a hologram version of Jane that is the advisor to these kids on this experimental starship that they steal. Interesting. It's definitely a kid show. Don't get me wrong. It's a kid show. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah. 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 There's nothing wrong with kid shows. I like X Men too and Spider Man. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, so we are going to do some of the new series in the next episode. Look for that and check Jana Pride out on her social media. All of the links are available in the description of this video, or at least as many as I could get. So you can find her on all of those places. Go follow her. Tell her Mayhem Media sent you and share out her stuff so that she can find more people and get more work. Uh, she is an independent referee, and that's what she initially brought her on the show. And now we're talking here talking about Star Trek. And we're going to be back talking about more Star Trek. <laughs> yes, we're going to do some more Star Trek. And then we're going to do some more Star Trek. And we may even have some Star Wars coming as well. So look for that. we got lots of episodes planned in the future. We are all going to also going to start bringing back some other um, people. So look for an episode in the next couple of weeks. I haven't talked to him yet. So if he ends up watching Connor Clarkson, we'll have him back on real soon. Um, and we do want to have Oliver Williams back on uh, soon as also. Thank you, Joe Monroe, for tuning in. Uh, and follow Joe Monroe. Give him a shout out. Joe Monroe, go follow him. He's doing Podcasters Appreciation Month. I'm going to be a guest on there on April 15th, Monday, April 15th. So make sure you tune in to the Joe Monroe Show and uh, watch me there. I don't know what we'll be talking about, but he, I'm going to give him free access. He can ask me anything he wants. So tune into that. And Friends of the Squared Circle, Crandall Q, go check out him and his podcast as well. And even though I don't think he commented, I don't know if he was tuning in or not, we're going to give him a shout out. Mike D, friend, um, wrestling from the 313, go check him out and give him a follow as well. Tell him Mayhem Media sent you. Marcus Fredrickson played us out, plays us in and out of every episode. Go check out his music. Jana Pride likes his music. She jams every time we're coming into an episode. So yeah. make sure you look for that. Um, uh, ReverbNation.com slash Marcus Fredrickson. Listen to his music and uh, share out your favorite song. We want to know what your favorite song is uh, from his music. 
And what else did I did I need to do? Uh, we're on Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble. We're on Twitter. You can follow me, JD, at Mayhem Prez. And, of course, our storefront, bonfire.com slash store slash JDE Designs. That's with a Z at the end of it. Get yourself a Mayhem Media Apparel uh, shirts. We have two different designs, so pick something up. Uh, we also have a mug available. Shout-outs to Robbie H., our graphic artist, who made us this logo and everything else that we share on the storefronts. I think I've given everybody I need to give a shout out to. I think I've given all of our outlets a plug. So for Jaina Pride, I am your host, JD, and that's the end. Thanks.